yeah so welcome and uh thank you uh especially if you're returning if you've been here before this is the ant-man channel ant-man right here the host i've been doing this for years now and i just think it's i don't I, you know i like my platform i like what i do i'm just reading off of i think what is trustworthy journalist websites you know like wnd or christian post or like is uh times of israel i like to read from other uh, places but sometimes you know it's kind of weird but they have some contributors that i don't agree with and that's how it is, you know, that's what journalism is, and you, you know what I mean? It's good to have people that are at least honest and to have, you know, interesting things to talk about uh, instead of just having these certain talking points and trying to keep with the, you know, status quo and whatnot. I like people who, you know, like to point out things that are very, like, pinpoint to, like, where we could start making changes because I'm not just about pointing out problems. That's what that's what liberals are good for, I guess. They, they like to point out problems and think they're smart. I like to think of solutions, and I think that that's what our cognitive thinking is for. It's so that we can make decisions and make solutions to our problems. So, speaking of problems, we got a big one now. And this one is one that's probably floating under a lot of people's radars. But this is kind of stuff that I like to, that I like to touch on. I'm on ChristianPost.com on the opinion column. And Rick McDaniel, who is exclusive to Christian Post, wrote this about three days ago at 7.12 a.m. It was published. Deadpool, a sign of a sin-sick culture where evil wins over good. Well, the first thing that I notice is that the antagonist is a bad guy. The second thing that I notice is that Marvel makes comic books. And these comic books, when I was, everybody when they were a little kid, read comic books in America. So... That's American culture, you know, we all grow up reading comic books here. But it's rated R. So obviously little kids can't go watch it. But what does that tell you? That Hollywood is trying to make a, in my opinion, some kind of a beta male, baby man culture where men that are my age are driven to the movie theater to watch cartoon characters. And I, I mean, that sounds like a little mean and nasty and like maybe, I like, you know, I like superheroes. I play... I play Marvel games, you know, like, like, I do that kind of stuff, but think about that, you know what I mean, they're like, they're making this entire generation of people my age, like little children, like I'm serious, where they literally live in a fantasy, where they dress up like people, they go to Comic Con, and I have nothing against Comic Con, but it's a perfect example of how hardcore some people are about their fandom when it comes to Marvel superheroes, like I said, I have nothing against this. Marvel and movies like this, but it's kind of weird. It is aimed, and it, it to me it has an agenda because it's not aimed at you, even though they are trying to make it seem like that. It's aimed at children. It's aimed at corrupting young minds, and I think that that is the Hollywood satanic agenda, in my opinion. And that's freaking real. Look into it. You know, there's people that want to demoralize you by making you watch things that you shouldn't be watching. Uh, maybe things that you're not able to handle yet. Maybe until you're older or wiser, you know, maybe then you can indulge in this stuff. But it's unhealthy for you when you're young and inexperienced. And that's why the Bible tells you to watch yourself. So let's get into this. How is it that Deadpool, a movie populated with incredible violence, nudity, and gratuitous sex is so popular? Perhaps the fact this movie is not just popular but is setting all-time records is a sign of perilous times, a signal of a culture where secularization has taken hold. As Christopher Lash has stated, the vacuum left by secularization has been filled by a permissive culture that replaces the concept of sin with the concept of sickness. The movie Deadpool centers on the Marvel comic anti-hero Wade Wilson, an ex-Special Forces soldier turned mercenary. The raunchy, filthy dialogue is stunning to all but the most desensitized. But you know what I have to say is that this is, they're showing you M, um, they're showing you the, uh, the, the Monarch program right before your eyes. They're showing you the entire MK Ultra mind control thing that is real in real life. It's trauma-based mind control. The main character is tied to a bed. He's tortured. He's made into this super soldier. He's made into this numbed out, crazy murderer because of that torture. And that's real, you guys. The The freaking government has been caught doing that before. And, and other pe people's governments do that and have done that in the past as well. You can 
take control of somebody's mind by torturing them. And it's scientific. So they're showing you this in a movie. Like that's the plot of the movie. It's part of the plot. And it's right in front of your eyes. Like you're that dumb and you don't understand what's going on. You know what I mean? It's really, it's, it's the subliminal messages that are put in the movies. And um, they're, they're to put their plans right in front of your face. Uh, they do this to you, uh, but it's called quantitative easing. They get you to understand what they're doing by showing it to you, little by little, what they actually really do in real life. This machine, if you will, this this secret society, if you will, this higher elite that are controlling or trying to control things, right? But let's get back into this. But some would defend Deadpool's character as someone that must be pop, uh, properly understood. He is simply mentally unstable uh, and cannot be held to a moral standard when he is slightly insane. Uh, you see, because he had it hard in life, they would see his choices of selfishness uh, over compassion and murder over heroism as indicators of his mental state. The comic books might reveal some of, the, of this, but the movie certainly glorifies his behavior. And it is the movie that so many people have seen and are going to see. For followers of Christ, there is a clear reality. We are to identify evil and acknowledge sin. The attempt to relabel sin as sickness to make us patients instead of, instead of sinners and to use words like compulsive instead of sinful must be repudiated. I agree. Uh, I do agree. These are very dangerous ideas that the public are being subconsciously fed. You know what I mean? And, and it is dangerous to turn people into mindless people who just make excuses for their behavior and, and try to justify it. You know what I mean? Because of their upbringing and their life was hard. And, ah, oh man, you know what I mean? Like, I, it's not a good enough excuse for you to go around and do whatever you want. It's just, I'm sorry. Still, of Ryan, uh, I'm going to use this, I guess, as the uh, image. It's Ryan Reynolds, Stephen Kapitik, and Brianna Hildebrand in the movie. I might go watch, not in the theaters, but I want to watch it low-key. But don't go watch it if you're a Christian. There's gonna, It's all bad for you. You know what I mean? Go watch something else, you know what I mean? If you're a Christian, go watch something else. I definitely don't promote watching movies like this. Me, I kind of have like a little sinful desire to sometimes just want to peek into the, you know, movies that are like this. And it's purely for entertainment. I don't, you know what I mean? Or, or if anything, it's for educational purposes. But when I do watch these things and I see this stuff, it kind of does make my, you know, make me feel a little bad. Like, I don't like it. Just participating in this. And watching it makes me feel like I'm a part of it. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't, I say don't do it. Unless it's for, you know, s research reasons or whatever. Uh, Deadpool is a character that encourages a taxi driver to murder his cousin who's competing with him for the affection of a woman. He repeatedly makes fun of an elderly blind woman. He jokes about sexual molestation of a child while flirting with a prostitute. The qualities of so many superheroes, integrity, compassion, and selfish or selflessness are nowhere to be found. It is shocking to think a film with this message has so quickly become such a gigantic hit. The movie had the biggest R-rated opening weekend in history by raking in $132.7 million, surpassing 2013's The Matrix Reloaded, uh, and number one again in its second weekend of release, crossing $235 million domestically. Internationally, Deadpool took in an estimated... 85 million dollars bringing its overseas total to 256.5 million combined with its domestic total the firm currently sits at 491.9 million in just under two weeks of release domestically deadpool has now grossed more than any of the x-men movies and is only second to x-men days of future past 747.9 million dollars worldwide Yet, despite its box office smashing success of modern culture's approval, what other measures would we look at to judge Deadpool? Let's look at Romans 12.9, which tells us, Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. The original word in the Bible for hate means to despise, to express a strong feeling of horror. Christ followers are to despise, to be horrified by the evil in the Deadpool movie. We should have no desire to be entertained by it. Our commitment is to oppose what is morally wrong and to be disgusted by it. Yeah, I would call it flirting with the devil. You know what I mean? That's what that's what it is. You know, it's kind of like playing with fire. You know what I mean? Bad company corrupts good character. Why is that? Because it's easy. 
for us to be influenced, <laughs> to be going the wrong way. You know what I mean? We're, it's the flesh. The flesh and the spirit are opposed to one another. The flesh gets hungry and needs to eat to keep living. So does the inner man. The inner man, the spirit of God, if you're born again, needs to be fed the word of God. It's like soap. You got to apply it every day because you get muddy and dirty every day from walking around in the earth. You see, like some Christians, they think like, oh yeah, I got called. So now I'm a, now I'm just going to stay inside. No, we're called, but we're also, we're also, you know, sent back out into the world. We're not to be like pampered and afraid, but we're to also be very watchful that this evil that we're playing with is a lot more dangerous than we think it is. So let's get back into this. Um, in another recent movie, Inside Out, there is a character uh the the char there is the character disgust her job is to keep riley the main character from being poisoned both physically and emotionally she keeps a careful eye on people places and things and won't let riley lower her standards a healthy interior life means we are to hate evil and be disgusted with sin rationalizing our behavior our choices and our thinking can cause us to believe sin is somehow okay you don't tickle a grizzly bear you don't swim with a great white shark and you don't play with a rattlesnake when you flirt with sin, you are flirting with disaster. We are to cling to what is good. The word for cling means to glue or cement together. It is the same word used about marriage when the Bible says a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two become one. We should be cemented to good and have nothing to do with evil. When good is the atmosphere of your life, you suffocate in the presence of evil. So when... <laughs> well, I don't even know what that means. When good is the atmosphere of your life, you suffocate in the presence of evil well i guess living too close to the world not wanting to be out of step with what is current or cool opens you up to all kinds of sin to be cemented to good means sin have uh sins have to go it takes courage to do what is right and go against the cultural flow but the good will bless your life in so many ways while evil will harm it in so many ways deadpool is a wake-up call for the church and followers of christ it may be just a movie but its popularity reveals much about our present culture. It is a sign of a sin-sick culture where evil is winning over good. Amen. That is true. We, we must hate evil and be totally committed to everything that is good. Yeah, uh, I don't think anybody takes this stuff too seriously. But I, I, I say that is this is a very, very fundamental uh, issue where, you know, it's a very basic one where we can get everything back together if we were to just go back to knowing how to deal with this stuff and it's it, it really is a big deal so if you think it's not a big deal then it, it's just going to perpetuate it's going to get you it says in the bible that those that are you know part of the world's you know what i mean like they're they're going with the flow they're with it and whatnot they're waxing worse and worse by the day there is you're either you know when you're a christian you're climbing up a pole you're either climbing the pole or you're falling down it because there is no stagnation. It's either you are day by day, day by day being transformed from glory to glory or you are backsliding or you are straight up just not even aware of what's going on. But this is this is like what I'm saying. This is this is the stagnation rule. In my opinion, it's just something that you got to be aware of and, and say, what what am i really being influenced by what i'm watching is it just entertainment is it just you know what i mean a, a a bit of distraction for me when i get home from work and i just want to have you know i just want to sit in my lazy boy chair and watch some tv and relax i deserve it ask yourself what are you even being what are you what are you being entertained by and is it is it influencing your tr your train of thought the way that you think the way that you act the way that you even speak, because we know that life and death is in the tongue. And if our tongue is not, we, I guess we cannot ever tame our tongue. The Bible pretty much says our tongue is a crazy, out of control fire. But we can at least learn how to govern ourselves, you know what I mean, to a certain degree. So I wouldn't make excuses for our behavior. I would look to God to change me from the inside out. It's the only way. This book right here, if you read it. It'll change your life. It's up to you, though, to, to, to take that decision. Um, I could talk for hours and you still, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It's up to you to make the decision to want to seek God. When you seek, you'll find, it says in the Bible. So 
Uh, put your faith in God. God bless.